Welcome! We're going to do some Tesla talk today. Today we're going to talk about this 2012 Tesla Model S 85 that we have for sale. Uh, 2012 was the first model year for the Tesla Model S and I consider it the first true Tesla. Uh, the first Tesla was a Tesla Roadster but the Tesla Roadster uh, was largely based off the model, uh, the Tesla Elise platform. So they basically took a Tesla you know, a mid-engine uh, little two-door sports car, and they uh, kind of retrofitted it. They took the design and they made it into a battery electric vehicle, which worked awesome. That helped put Tesla on the map. But for the first ground-up, totally Tesla-designed, engineered vehicle is the Model S. And uh, it's 2012 Model S. Now it's 2024. Uh, so, uh, you know, Back in 2012, the jury, uh, we didn't really know how long uh, electric cars were going to last. We didn't know how long Tesla's, you know, how well Tesla's were going to hold up. But now the jury's out. There are plenty of examples of Model S's out there with many hundreds of thousands of miles. This 2012 actually has pretty low mileage for 2012. It only has 66,622 miles. We actually took this in on trade for a newer Tesla. We're starting to get lots of uh, older Teslas in on trade for newer Teslas. Uh, Tesla's owners seem to like the product and want to upgrade to newer versions. Uh, but you know the newer versions are more money so maybe if you want to get into Tesla ownership uh, older model less like this might be the perfect segue for you to get into Tesla ownership or electric vehicle ownership and there's pros and cons so um, you know let's talk about the battery the batteries and these things have proven to be very robust there are Teslas out there uh, with 300 plus thousand miles with the original batteries in them uh, check out the Tesla owners club on Facebook it's a lot of Tesla owners with their high mileage Teslas. Uh, we've had a few Teslas ourselves with over 100,000 miles on them and knock on wood, the batteries work great. We have never had to deal with a, a Tesla with a failing battery. Uh, I know that's a big concern for a lot of people, but batteries are kind of like the engines in the car. They're designed to last the life of the vehicle, not to be replaced. Uh, there are situations when, you know, engines go prematurely go bad, same thing with batteries. Uh, there are some warranties that you can get on older Teslas if you're concerned about the cost of a new battery. A new battery in this thing is probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars. There are also companies uh, popping up that will uh, offer refurbished batteries or can repair older batteries. Don't know too much to that, but those are some options aside from going through a Tesla service center. Um, yeah, you know that's the thing to think about. You know, comparing this to like you know buying a Toyota Corolla or something like that, or you know. A Toyota Corolla is going to cost less to own. It's, you know, basic transportation. This is a premium luxury sedan. So yeah, we all have to take that consideration. You know, you can't compare the ownership of a Model S to a, you know, cheaper, you know, more economical vehicle like a Toyota Corolla, Camry, or Honda Accord. But this has a lot of, uh, you know, this offers a lot of things that you don't get with a, you know, Camry, Corolla, or Accord. It's a, you know, beautiful, large uh, luxury sedan. It's very smooth, it's very quiet, it offers uh, you know amazing performance even for an older Tesla. So these older Model S's, uh, they do have some things that you don't get with the newer Model S's. In fact, they just finished doing a, a video right before this one of a, our 21 Model S Plaid, um, which is a very cool vehicle, but it's a lot more money than this one. Uh, so one cool thing about these older Teslas that you don't get on the newer Teslas, you actually get a real uh, leather interior. Uh, the new Teslas have kind of like a synthetic leather interior um, you know, it looks good, but it doesn't feel the same as real leather for people who are kind of purists in that aspect. So this being an older Model S 2012, this is kind of more what we call a value oriented car. There are a few things wrong with it that, you know, you can address and fix. Uh, if you have to own it yourself or you can just kind of keep it the way it is. For one, uh, the sunroof is not opening. <laughs> Uh, sounds like it's binding. Maybe the tracks need to be lubricated. Um, it does completely seal, um, so it doesn't let water in. Uh, you do have these nice glass roof panels. In fact, Tesla actually completely did away with sunroofs. I think 2017 was the last year they had a sunroof that opens because they actually look at data and the data says that they could see actually how many people opened the sunroofs and it was actually a pretty low amount. Um, so now they just have glass roof panels in their vehicles and maybe they had some issues with these sunroofs are complex and they added weight to the vehicle and they had uh, issues like uh, this one is so maybe that's a reason why they got away with it so you can have tesla fix it maybe uh, you know they could fix it for a thousand fifteen hundred two thousand dollars or you can just kind of leave, leave it the way it is and you know not open it and you still have uh, you know these glass roof panels so you can take control of that natural light uh, another thing that's obviously wrong and you might see the lines in the screen well that's just the um that's just the uh, uh that's just the illusion from the camera the gopro print camera the, the the screen is perfectly fine there's no 
uh, moving <laughs> waving lines on it um, so we can see that the screen is starting to uh, delaminate this is common on these older screens um, it functions fine it actually functions pretty fast for a 2012 display um, so yeah it's more of a cosmetic issue uh, this kind of has a sandwich of membranes to make it work and uh, the glue that glues these uh, kind of all these layers together can can fail and start to delaminate which is happening I think Tesla can replace uh, this uh, for about a thousand fifteen hundred dollars if I remember correctly so that's something that you might want to uh, fix in the future or you know if you can get past the cosmetics of it you know it still seems to work fine like I said it's a cosmetic issue it's not affecting the functionality and this is kind of a common issue with these earlier Teslas um, so that's might, something you might run into in these earlier Model S's and we can talk about driver's assistant these older Model S's aren't going to be able to work autopilot they're not going to be able to have full self-driving it has you know cruise control but if you want a newer if you want a Tesla of autopilot and some of those advanced driver's assistance systems are also called ADAS you'd probably have to look at a newer Tesla I think 2014 or 2015 was the first year that they actually were starting to put like the highway autopilot in Tesla's uh, you know so this one is just kind of driving a little bit more uh, old school I guess if you're used to like the adaptive cruise control and stuff like that you're not gonna have it in these older Tesla's you can't upgrade it it's not reconfigurable that's just kind of you're gonna have to live with it the way it is um, so here's the uh, screen right here this is the 85 that's the size of the battery uh, when fully charged on this one I think the range is about a you know 200 250 miles uh, but you know what, uh, since uh, we'll take this to the supercharger and we'll charge it uh, to 80% and see what the range is. Right now, uh, it's about like, uh, looks like it's about 25% and it's showing 77 miles. So we can uh, take it to the supercharger, take it for a drive and see uh, see how it uh, how it charges up. And that's another se segue. Uh, with these older Teslas, uh, Tesla had a really nice perk. A lot of people ask for this feature and it's pretty rare. We've only had a handful of Teslas <laughs> with this feature. And here's the app. The app is really cool. You can put the climate control on. You can pull up the location of the vehicle. You can set service appointments. Um, but here we go to specs and warranty. Uh, so this actually has a decent amount of optional equipment. It has the ultra high fidelity sound system. Um, it has a GPS, GPS enabled home link. Um, we have the all glass panoramic roof, which is not opening, unfortunately. Um, we have the smart air suspension. This has a tech package. Um, and then here's the important thing, free unlimited supercharging. Uh, I think 2015 might've been the last year that they offered that. So free unlimited supercharging is just that. You go to a supercharger, you charge it, and it's free of charge. And supercharging sessions can be ex uh, expensive. It could be 10, 12, 15, sometimes up to $24 for one supercharging session. Here's a screenshot of a supercharging session of one of our customers. He kept it on our account that was part of the deal, but he flew in from uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and he bought our Model S and he drove it to back to San Fran, supercharging the whole way. So he spent about $160 in electricity supercharging it. Uh, you know, you're gonna pay a premium for fast charging versus home charging. But, you know, that's $160 that you wouldn't have spent if you own this particular Model S because it's free unlimited supercharging. And here is another perk about that. And, you know, this is not set in stone. I'm just going back, uh, going off of what Tesla has done in the past. It might not necessarily be the case in the future, but we actually see this happening right now with full self-driving. They might also offer this again with uh, free and limited supercharging. We actually had a customer that took advantage of this. So right now, uh, Tesla has a deal. If you wanna buy a new Tesla, uh, you can transfer your current full self-driving capability to that new Tesla. You don't even have to trade it in. You can just have it on your old Tesla. You can still keep your old Tesla, but you can take that FSD, take it off your old Tesla and transfer it to your brand new one. Uh, sometimes they do that with a lifetime supercharging. We had a customer we bought a Model S from and he, wasn't getting enough money for a trade-in value from Tesla, so he sold it to us. We were actually giving him more money for a trade value. Um, but even though he traded in with us, he still was able to transfer his free unlimited supercharging to his new Model Y. So if you buy this Model S with a free unlimited supercharging or another Tesla with free unlimited supercharging, it is quite possible that in the future, Tesla will have a uh, limited time offer where they'll allow you to transfer that free unlimited supercharging from this Tesla or that other Tesla you might be looking at with the free unlimited supercharging to a brand new one that you buy from Tesla. 
So um, sometimes they do that when they want to, you know, uh, move some access inventory and st things like that. Um, they come up with these promotions. Um, and, you know, it's not set in stone. I don't know if they'll offer it again, but uh, they've done it a few times in the past. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that they'll probably offer that deal uh, for the free limited supercharging. So that's something to keep in mind. Even though you might buy this older Model S, um, if you plan on supercharging a lot, the, just the uh, chance to be able to transfer that to a newer Tesla in the future uh, that you want to buy, uh, that, that's a big deal for some people because, you know, fr free supercharging is like free gas, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so the screen's working great. It's not as, you know, fast and uh, high resolution as the screens in the newer Teslas, but like I said, it still works good. You have the climate control system. Uh, there's dog mode, camp mode. Um, you can play video games. They have the toy box where they have like a silly whoopee cushion, things like that. Nice interior. Um, I have a Model 3. The Model S kind of has a little bit more of a premium, uh, nicer interior than the Y <laughs> and the 3. It's definitely a more premium luxury vehicle. This car is probably, you know, over $100,000 when it was brand new. It wasn't cheap by any means. Um, you know, a lot more money than a Model 3 or Y. So you have, you know, extra screens, you have a little bit more pizzazz on the inside and outside. We put four brand new tires on this one. Uh, so of these older cars, you know, we're not gonna fix every little, you know, thing, every cosmetic thing with these older cars, but we do guarantee they're safe to drive. So, you know, if it needs tires or the brakes are bad, we're gonna address that. But, you know, things like the sunroof, delamination on the screen, we, we're not gonna fix all that stuff on these older pre-owned cars. Looks like Detail forgot to vacuum that out. We'll have to, we'll have to send that back. But look at this frunk. You actually, uh, since this is a rear-wheel drive uh, Model S, they didn't have all-wheel drive back then when it first came out. It's just a single rear electric motor. Since there's no electric motor in the front, that actually allows for more space. This is actually really a lot of space. It's like having a second trunk, pretty much. Beautiful looks and lines in the S. It hasn't changed. Even the 2023 uh, <laughs> Model S, the 2023 and 2024s, uh, the exterior looks very similar uh, to this old one. Uh, and this was pretty advanced. This had one of the lowest drag coefficients out of any vehicle, even uh, the, you know, uh, the Toyota Prius, uh, the Nissan Leaf, the Chevy Bolt, better drag coefficient. And we can probably s say that this looks a little bit better <laughs> than a Nissan Leaf or a Chevy Bolt or a Toyota Prius. I think a lot better. Uh, there's the uh, original charger. Uh, you can fold down the seats. You have more uh, space under here as well. And even though it kind of has a sedan profile, it looks like it has a trunk. This lift back makes it a little bit more practical, a little bit more cargo space because you have the ability to fold down those rear seats to expand your cargo space. All right, let's get behind the wheel and take it for a spin and take it to the supercharger and get some free electricity. All right, here we are. We're gonna take this 2012 Model S out for a spin. Let's take it to the supercharger. So let's go to pedals and steering. I'm gonna put the steering in sport mode. Um, regenerative braking, you can go have low and standard. Uh, you can also add creep mode so it you know, acts like a regular car. I, I don't usually live in creep mode. So to find a supercharger, we have this lightning bolt right here. So there's lightning bolt right here. So the one is uh, slow charging, two is like medium charging, and the three lightning bolts, that's our fast charging. Lots of uh, fast charging options. We have four within seven miles of us. Two just pop, Tesla's popping up these superchargers like crazy. It's built two of them in the past couple months. Um, so we'll go to this one on Steel Street, uh, a little about, uh, about uh, 5.2 miles from us. And you can see this shows how many stalls are available. So you can see if one's full up. That has 11 stalls available, five stalls. So there should be plenty of space for us to charge. So we're gonna navigate to that supercharger. And uh, this also has a trip planner too. So um, if you're going to go on a road trip and you're going to drive somewhere and you're worried about ha having enough range to get to your destination, you can just put it in a trip planner and it'll plan the whole route for you. It'll tell you where to charge. Uh, it'll navigate you to a charger on your route how, and tell you how long to charge for. So you'll always make it to your destination. So if you're, you know, it takes the mileage anxiety out of owning a Tesla. So if you're ever worried about making it somewhere, just put it in the trip planner and you can uh, plan your whole trip out ahead of time and make sure that you have enough range to make it there. Generally, uh, you know, Tesla does a very good job. They have superchargers everywhere, so you can pretty much drive almost anywhere in the country. I'm sure there's some dead zones that are in areas where there's no one around, but most 
most populated areas, you can drive pretty much anywhere in a Tesla with their supercharger network. Very smooth and quiet. You know, for a car that's, uh, you know, about 12 years old, uh, very smooth, very quiet, very nice to drive. So, I mean, what are we going to compare this to? We're going to compare this to maybe a 2012 Mercedes-Benz E-Class or S-Class BMW 5 Series or 7 Series. So when you have a 12-year-old European luxury car with, you know, 80, 100,000 miles on it, they can start leaking oil. Uh, you can start getting to more expensive maintenance items. Uh, you know, generally cars, uh, gas-powered cars are a lot more complex than electric cars. Obviously, the biggest thing to worry about on this one um, is the battery. That's the you know biggest maintenance item. It's twenty or thirty thousand dollars for a new battery if the, the battery goes bad in this thing. But aside from that, you know, the rest of the stuff is pretty manageable. Um, you know, it can cost a couple thousand dollars for this or that, but you know, there's nothing that's gonna provide a huge uh, maintenance expense. Uh oh, what do we got going on over here? We got a train coming, good old Tacoma Rail. I'm going to mash the accelerator. Very smooth, very linear acceleration. <laughs> Obviously, it's not like Model S Plaid fast, but compared to a, a lot of, you know, other vehicles, this thing is pretty quick. Uh, there's this one gear. So you hit the throttle, you have instantaneous thrust. This thing just takes right off. Very smooth, very quiet. Uh, you know, me putting a lot of, um, you know, European, older European cars through the shop, when they get 12 years old, you know, 80,000 miles, that's when we start to see expensive things, uh, you know, go wrong. A lot of them start to leak oil and it, you know, it could cost thousands of dollars to start fixing oil leaks, things like that. Uh, brakes, brakes can be very expensive too. I mean, for a high performance car, uh, it could be a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, just for new pads and rotors for the front. You could, you know, on a high performance or you know European luxury car. This guy's all over the place. <laughs> oh, it's a derelict car. <laughs> it's got like a flat tire and stuff. <laughs> we we noticed that we've never had to do a. We've had hundreds of Teslas, and we've never had to do brakes on one Tesla. Usually the brakes last 150, 200,000 miles because of regenerative braking. You're using the electric motor a lot of times to slow down the vehicle and recapture that energy and put it back in the battery versus, you know, heat through brakes. So brakes can last a lot longer. <laughs> um, and, you know, so you're not just going to save money on gas, you're also going to save money on maintenance. And from a reliability perspective, generally the, the least reliable out of all the Tesla products that I've found is to be the Model X because it's the most complex. You know, you have the the front doors power open and close. You have the Falcon wing doors that power open and close. Uh, the, you have these bench seats that can often break and be expensive to fix. The cables break and they have to replace the whole seat assembly. Uh, so, you know, from uh, if you're wondering what is probably the uh, most reliable and least reliable of all the Teslas, I'd probably say the three and the Y are probably the most reliable because they're the simplest. Uh, but the, uh, the three, the the uh, the S is probably the next reliable, and the X is the least reliable. Uh, you know, this has an air suspension that can have issues, uh, but it's not too bad. Like I had an air suspension break in a Model X, and where it might be five, ten thousand dollars to re replace an air suspension or fix an air suspension, like on a Range Rover or a BMW, it was only about fifteen hundred dollars on the Tesla. So they don't seem to gouge you as far as service goes, and part of that is because Tesla is a uh, they are a, a vertically integrated company where a lot of other, you know, car dealerships or franchises, they have part distributors and stuff like that. So there's a system of middlemen and markups here and there, parts and things might be marked up several times by the time it gets to the consumer where Tesla is vertically integrated. So they tried to make as much stuff in-house as possible uh, so they can streamline the process of building, servicing vehicles, getting parts. And usually that translates to uh, lower repair costs uh, for the consumers. And, you know, me doing repairs on Tesla, a uh, Tesla versus, you know, having to repair, you know, uh, vehicles at BMW and Mercedes, uh, it seems like uh, the, the, the prices seem to be rather reasonable as Tesla's concerned. 
Um, and I think that's, you know, a big part of that is because they're a vertically integrated company and they don't have the same, you know, markup franchise dealer thing as uh, everyone else. I mean, uh, Rivian is kind of following the same thing as uh, Tesla, where it's, uh, you know, they don't have uh, franchise dealerships like almost everyone else. Uh, but aside from that, everyone has, you know, you know, dealer franchises and, you know, they have a, a lot more markup and things like that. This thing's very smooth. It tracks down the highway beautifully. Uh, very nice car to drive. Acceleration's excellent. You still have plenty of acceleration at 70 miles an hour. Plenty of uh, power for passing merging on the highway. Um, yeah, it's a, you know, so, you know, what are you going to expect to pay for an older Model S like this and this price point? Well, it depends. I mean, you could be watching this vehicle five years in the future and, you know, things, pricing could be a lot different. Uh, just like two years ago, two years ago, you know, EVs were really expensive. It's kind of a bubble. So, I mean, two years ago, you probably couldn't get into almost any, you know, Tesla product for, you know, less than $50,000 unless I had a bunch of miles on it or I like, got a salvage title. But now, you know, they've all come down, you know, so you, you can get, you know, a lot of nice uh, Tesla EVs for under 30,000, be it a three, uh, some some of the little bit higher mileage Ys, uh, these older X, Xs and Ss. This one's priced in the low $20,000 price range. They don't get too much in the pricing, because the thing is, is that we change our prices on a weekly basis. And, you know, maybe you're watching this video five years in the future, so the price might seem way out of whack compared to what it is now in February of 2024. But, um, you know, EVs are becoming a lot more accessible to a wider range of people. Obviously, when, you know, EVs were forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, that really limited, you know, the amount of buyers who could afford one. But now when you can buy, you know, decent quality EVs for, you know, twenty, under $30,000, I mean, that's pretty much a sweet spot. I mean, pretty much in today's market, you're going to have a hard time finding a nice uh, used car for less than $20,000. I'm sure if you look really hard, you could. But most decent, you know, reliable, not mileaged out, you know, <laughs> used cars are in the twenty dollars to $30,000 price range. We saw a lot of inflation during COVID. Um, so, you know, that's something that kind of changed the market a little bit. Um, and so this is kind of smack dab right in that price range, you know, 66,000 miles. It doesn't have a bunch of miles on it. So, you know, this could be a great, uh, nice electric luxury sedan for somebody. And yeah, you know, there is that, you know, potential for the battery to go bad. But you know what? You know, when an engine goes bad, that can be pretty expensive too. Like, uh, you know, for us to put like a used engine in one of our Infinities, when, when they go bad, that's twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. A new engine could be twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, depending on what it is. Um, you know, so if you're comparing, if you compare, you know, replacing an engine to a, like a Honda Accord or a Toyota Corolla, you know, that's going to be a lot cheaper. But I think a lot of people who are buying this Model S, they're not also, you know, comparing this to like a, a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Accord. They're maybe thinking about getting like a 5 Series BMW or a Lexus, uh, Mercedes, where, you know, replacing an engine in one of those can be a lot of money too. But there's also a lot of things that can go wrong in those vehicles that, you know, we won't have to worry quite as much about this. Like transmissions can go bad as well. A used transmission can be six to $12,000, depending on what it is. This just has one gear transmission. The transmission's not gonna go bad in this. Um, you know, brakes is a big maintenance item that I already went over, you know, so you'll probably never have to worry about bra brakes, you know, in your ownership of this, or maybe when it has like 200,000 miles on it. But, you know, gas cars have thousands of moving parts. So there's a lot more that can go wrong in a gas car uh, versus something like this, which has dozens of moving parts. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So money can be saved, not just with electricity, you know, obviously, uh, you know, if you charge at home, uh, especially in the Pacific Northwest, our electricity rates are very low. So uh, it's gonna be a lot less to, you know, charge at home versus what you'd have to pay for gas, the comparable gas vehicle. Then on top of that, you have the option of using the free and limited supercharging. So that's, you know, you're not gonna have to pay anything for that, which is nice. You're gonna save money on maintenance. So there's a lot of ways to, you know, save money on electric vehicles. And the, another nice thing is this, like how smooth and quiet it is. Like we're at a dead stop. I don't feel any idling of the engine. I don't feel any vibrations of a running engine. I don't feel the shifting of a transmission. 
it is a completely smooth and linear driving experience. All right, here we are. We're arriving at these uh, brand new superchargers that they built over here. The thing about Tesla is they always try to build superchargers out of uh, places where you can kind of get out and do things by malls, uh, you know, shopping centers, Starbucks. Uh, they tend to always build them around places where you can kind of get out and do stuff if you don't want to sit in the vehicle and wait for it to charge. So uh, they've really upped the ante on charging in the Tacoma area. They built some new chargers down the street. Then they built this other bank of chargers recently here. It's always good to give a little space on the chargers uh, so you don't charge off the same circuit. Sometimes if there's a Tesla directly next to you, you can charge off the same circuit. So here we pull in. It's very easy to do. You put it in park. You get out, you grab the charger, hit this button right there, it pops open, you plug it in. And boom, just like that you're charging. And then they'll give you some super charging tips. So we're about 58 miles of range. These are new chargers. I used these uh, about a month ago. It was pretty cold out, but I think they, since they're new chargers, they kind of throttled them down a little bit. So let's see, hopefully these are operating faster than last time I used them, where they're actually pretty slow. But like I said, I think sometimes when they have brand new chargers, they don't just all, all of a sudden flip them on and start charging at max speed. Maybe they have to break them in and they just want to get them going at a lower charging rate before they really ramp it up. So. So right now, um, I have it set to charge to about, it looks like about 90%. Um, you know, this is a lithium ion battery, so Tesla doesn't recommend you charge it to 100% every day, uh, just for the happy, healthy life of the lithium ion battery. It's perfectly fine to charge it to 100%, you know, every once in a while for a road trip, but for daily use, they recommend about 80%. I think on these older Teslas, you know, they're okay with 90%, uh, but, um, you know, lithium ion batteries, they do not like to be charged 100% every day. So to get the maximum life of your battery, it's good to, you know, heed Tesla's uh, advice on charging. So, uh, we're charging at 8 kilowatts. These uh, superchargers are supposed to be rated up to 250 kilowatts. So it's adding about 33 mile of, miles of range per hour. Uh, pretty slow, um, you know. Uh, so the, this is an older Model S, so it shouldn't, it's not going to, uh, you know, be able to charge at the full 250 kilowatts like some of the newer Teslas, but 8 kilowatts is pretty slow. Um, and I have a feeling it might be these chargers. All right, we're charging painfully slow right here. 8 kilowatts, 34 miles an hour. Even with this older Tesla, I feel like it should be faster. So I'm thinking these new chargers are still kind of throttled. So we're gonna go down the street to another set of uh, Tesla chargers and see if we can get this thing to charge faster. Aside from that, if it's gonna take this long, I might as well just <laughs> take it back to work and throw it on our charger. I can make a better use of my time. All right, literally less than a minute away, maybe even less, <laughs> there's a whole nother bank of superchargers. So hopefully these ones will be faster. It seems like every time I charge at the other newer one that we were just at, it seems to be slower. So even though we might be sharing the same circuit with some of these other ones, hopefully this one will be charging uh, faster than what we were getting at that other one. All right, let's see what we got. All right, yeah, already looking a lot, lot better. Yeah, that other, so uh, that other one was uh, at eight kilowatts. Uh, we're at 35 kilowatts. Uh, it was telling me 50 minutes to charge to, you know, about 90%. So it's telling me 35 minutes to charge to 8%. Well, uh, some of the higher usage superchargers like this one, they limit to you uh, to an 80% charge. That other one, since that one is, was as busy, you can charge to 100% on that one. But you can see this one's a lot faster. Ah. So there is something still up with that uh, brand new supercharger. Uh, maybe for those in the comments who have inside knowledge or previous experience, maybe Tesla throttles back those brand new superchargers until they break them in or whatever. Uh, but this one is definitely charging a lot faster than we were before. So yeah, this is definitely a lot better. And I can uh, stomach waiting for this to charge versus that other one, which was like way, way, <laughs> taking way, way longer. All right, so we've added about 78 miles. Um, it's a little bit slower, so we, we can top this off at work. I gotta get back to work to do things. It's a little optimistic. It's saying about 25 minutes remaining. When I got here about 
I don't know, 25 minutes ago. It's at about 35 minutes for a full charge. So obviously it's a little optimistic. And that's the thing with these older Teslas. This is a 2012, so this is the original Tesla charging technology. So keeping that in mind, I mean, it's still not that bad. Uh, when you're sitting in the vehicle and watching it charge, it seems to take longer. Uh, you know, in a normal situation, if I was on a road trip, I'd probably get out, take a pee, go for a walk, get some food, something like that. Uh, that makes it time go by a lot faster versus just sitting in here. Um, yeah, and that's the thing, you know, for the best supercharging experience, the new Teslas tend to charge a little bit faster. Like this is charging at 35 kilowatts. So the nice thing too, uh, the app lets you manage your char charging, whether at home or on the fly. You can use this uh, slider right here to, you know, set the charging rate. We're limited to 80% since this is a high usage charger. But the nice thing is if I want to go and have some sushi, go to Jack in the Box, go for a little walk. Uh, if we're at the mall, if I want to go walk around the mall, uh, Tesla's pretty good at, you know, letting you know, hey, uh, you're about five minutes from your supercharging session to be done. You can get back to your car because Tesla will actually, they'll charge you a dollar a minute idle fee for keeping your vehicle on a charge when it's done charging, rightly so, because you're taking up a precious charging spot that someone else would need to use. So, uh, so not avoiding that, uh, you know, with this app, they'll notify you when your vehicle is close to being done charging. So you won't uh, be charged at idle fee. We have been charged at idle fee in the past, and it seems like they give you a pass the first time. They kind of, you know, give you a good talking to, wag your finger at you, and they say, well, well this time we're not going to charge you, but next time we will charge you the dollar a minute. So they give you a little bit of a warning before they actually charge you, which is nice. Like my Model 3 is a 2019, and it charges about 150 kilowatts versus 34 kilowatts here. So that's a little bit quicker. It has newer charging technology. And then the newest test is like if you bought a brand new 2024 uh model 3 or uh, you know a, a new model s or x that can uh, take advantage of these 250 watt kilowatt chargers a lot better um you know adding uh range so you know yeah the newer teslas will charge faster but um you know it is all a compromise newer teslas are more expensive but at this price point you can still take advantage of the tesla supercharging um and you don't have to wait the whole time i've added 82 miles so maybe if i just needed another 40 miles to finish my road trip to get to my destination where I can plug it in and charge it there, uh, you know, that solves a problem. You don't always have to wait the full, you know, charging time. Probably, realistically, probably about 45 minutes to an hour to get a full charge to 80% on this one. I was at 60 miles, so I've added, like I said, uh, 82 miles, which for a lot of people, that might be enough to make it to their destination. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today to watch this video, a little bit more in depth. Maybe long-winded, but you know, if you're looking for information on these older Model S's, uh, regardless if you're interested in this one or information in general, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, you know, if you enjoyed the video, like it, uh, subscribe. I'm always adding videos, not just Tesla's, all sorts of uh, cool products that we have at Infinity of Tacoma, and you can always get updates on some of our newest, coolest uh, uh, inventory that comes in. I try to get these videos up as, as soon as we get the vehicles cleaned and through the shop. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you soon, and have a wonderful day.